Yes, Roma wines taste better. Because only Roma selects from the world's greatest wine reserves for your pleasure. And now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, Roma Wines present Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Miss Angela Lansbury in A Thing of Beauty, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spears. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, those better-tasting California wines enjoyed by more Americans than any other wine. For friendly entertaining, for delightful dining. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines bring you Angela Lansbury in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! Now, if you will give me your arm. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. I think we shall just miss the storm if we hurry. Uh, rather somber place, isn't it? Oh, it gives her seclusion, and that's all she's ever asked for since she came here. Uh, that and what little uh, spiritual comfort I've been able to give her. Uh, how long ago was that, sir? Uh, that she came here, I mean? Oh, eight. Uh, no, let me see. No, no, no. Nine. Nine years ago in May. But uh, it, it was long before that that she left the stage. Well, she was in an institution for nearly ten years. A, a mental disorder. Though it's not her mind was ever sick or I'm mistaken. They do say she's a bit on the eccentric side, though. Oh, well, you'll be her spiritual advisor yourself soon enough uh, when I've retired. And I want you to meet her without prejudice. One day I, I'll tell you what I know, which goodness knows is little enough, and uh, what I have reason to believe, which is uh, somewhat more. I, uh, well, it seems we'll just about escape a drenching. Uh, 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 she lives completely alone? Uh, the one servant, that is all. Oh, Father Benton. Ah, oh, Suzette, uh, this is my new curate, uh, the Reverend Mr. Sedley. Uh, we are here to see Miss Tremaine. Well... Does she know you are not alone? Oh, my good Suzette, I haven't any idea. Uh, but you might let us in out of the rain, if you don't mind, while you so inform her. But if... Very well. Come in. Ah, thank you. If you would wait in the study, I will ask mm. if mademoiselle is able to see you. Ah, what in the world's got into that woman? She knows Miss Tremaine's been seeing me every fortnight at the same time for nine years. Hmm. Uh, there's a picture here. Is it of her? Uh, probably. My word, she was a beauty. Uh, your father could have told you. Ah, uh, yes, she was a legend of two continents. Must have been a very tragic thing to make a woman like that shut herself away. Is it true, sir, that she sees no one but you? No one. As far as I know, she has never set foot outside this house in all the time she's been here. Nor has she ever had a, a single visitor beside myself. But Why? Mademoiselle will see you now, Father, in her parlor across the hall. Oh, oh thank you, Suzette. Father Benson. Hello, hello, my dear. Come in, come in. Thank you. I do hope you don't mind my receiving you in the dark, but I have a mortal dread of lights during a storm. <laughs> Not at all, my dear. You'll find two quite comfortable chairs just there by the window, I think. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, Madeline... Uh, this is my new curate, uh, Mr. Sedley. Oh, yes, Mr. Sedley. It's a great pleasure to meet the famous beauty, even in the dark. Yes, I suppose you've heard of my beauty, Mr. Sedley. You know, as you came in, I was looking at this little gold mirror, engraved on the back of the words, A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Ah, uh, Keats? Yes, Oscar gave it to me. Oh? He said it was a magic mirror. When you are very old, Madeline, he said, you will only have to look in it to see yourself as you are now, young and radiant and a joy forever. And I've believed ever since then that Oscar was really something of a magician, because you know, it's true. <laughs> uh, was that Oscar Wilde, Miss Tremaine? Yes. Dear Oscar, dear dead days. I suppose you've already heard all the wild tales of my lurid past, Mr. Sedley? Oh, no, Miss Tremaine, I assure you. I... <laughs> I don't believe that Father Bentham has ever caught me in a reminiscing mood, have you, Father? But since you will one day be vicar here, Mr. Sedley, perhaps it would be better if you heard the truth from me. 
Miss Tremaine, don't think Oh, I... the truth is wild enough. It all began, I suppose, when John Gaylord gave me my first speaking part. That was so far too long ago to tell. My hair was a little darker. My voice was not quite as rich as it is now. A trifle more silvery, perhaps. John and Nell Garrett were the leads, and my part, well, it was one of those obscure little parts that no one pays any attention to until some obscure little actress comes along and makes the start of a career with it. It was then that I first experienced what will always be to me in all the range of human feelings, the supreme exaltation when you hear the full frenzied applause of an audience for you, for you alone. Yes? Madeline, may I see you? Oh, come in, John. Madeline, you are marvelous, simply marvelous. Oh, thank you, John. And such a little fool. A fool? I told you to play the part down, but it's getting worse and worse tonight. She's absolutely furious. She's going to make trouble for you, Madeline. <laughs> trouble? What kind of trouble? Oh, you don't know Nellie Garrett. But I know my audience, don't I? Oh, Madeline, you're so young and foolish and so beautiful. Why, thank you, John. So terribly beautiful. Oh, John, you're leading up to it again, aren't you? Oh, Madeline, this play isn't going to last forever. Even you can't keep it alive much longer. Why don't we make plans together now? We could have our own company. As the great John Gaylord and Mrs. Gaylord? No, of course not. Why, in a couple of years, you'd be as famous in your own right as Nell Garrett herself. Perhaps I don't want to wait a couple of years. Besides, John, I don't love you. But do you... do you love anyone? No... But when I marry, it'll be, oh, it'll be an up-and-coming young member of Parliament. Oh. Like. You're in for it now, Madeline. Please, no, please, please, my dear, you so must... So there you are, my fine miss. Now go easy, Miss Garrett. She's meant no harm. No harm, indeed. She has merely ruined my entire last act curtain for 29 consecutive performances. Hoisting her skirts clear above the ankle, ogling the stalls like a music hall Gretchen. Well, it's only because it's that kind of a part, Oh, is dear. it indeed she... now? Well, as long as I play the leads in this company, I will not have my best speech in the whole play utterly ruined by rowdy applause for the gutter antics of a half-baked ingenue. No, really, you're making a fool of yourself. And while we're on the subject, Mr. Gaylord, there are a few points I should like to discuss with you. When you help Miss Tremaine down from the swing in the second act, there's no need for you to keep your arm around her during the entire remainder of the scene. I'll admit that she appears ready to swoon at any moment. But one peep show performance is quite enough for an evening in Drury Lane. Well, really, Miss Garrett, if you can no longer hold either your audiences or your lovers... Why, you cheat! Nell! Nell, you should... I'll kill you for that, Nell Garrett. If I die for it, I'll kill you. I left the theatre and walked aimlessly out into the night, my eyes blinded with tears... Young, yes, and foolish as I was, I believed my poor little heart was truly broken. For I knew that Nell Garrett could ruin me with every theatre manager in London, and I knew she would. How long I wandered through those misty streets, or where, or even what I did, I shall never know. But just as dawn was breaking, I found myself, by some odd twist of fate, passing by the lodgings of John Gaylord. On a sudden impulse, I climbed the steps to his door. Yeah? Madeline! Hello, John. Darling, did anyone see you? See me? Come in, come in. Where have you been? Just walking, walking. Good Lord. Alone? Yes, why? Don't you know? Yes, John. I'm afraid I do. My career Your is... career? Oh, my poor child. John, what is it? Don't you know that Nell Garrett's been found dead with a knife in her back? Dead? Murdered. Oh, John. The police have been looking all over London for you. I've been expecting them here every moment. For me? Of course for you. But why? Madeline, last night you threatened to kill her in front of a dozen witnesses. Why wouldn't they be looking for you? <laughs> now, Madeline, darling, listen to me. Where did you go? What did you do? Uh, didn't anyone see you? Didn't you talk to anyone? No, no, I... You, you, you've got to tell them something. <laughs> but what can I tell Because if you... Don't tell them. They'll... John, I... Yes, yes, they, they'll hang oh, Madeline. No, no. Please, Madeline, 
You've got to think. <laughs> Try to remember something. Oh, I'm so alone. If, if only I had a friend. You have got a friend, Madeline. I'm your friend, but believe someone me. someone who loved me enough to at least say they were with me. <laughs> yes, who is it? Inspector Perez, Scotland Yard. Oh. In there, quickly, in the bedroom. John! Don't worry, I'll tell him something. Hurry! Uh, yes, coming. I'm sorry to rouse you at this early hour, sir. It's quite all right. Come in. You are Mr. John Gaylord? Yes. Of the Queen's Players Company, Drury Lane? Yes. Can you tell me, Mr. Gaylord, anything of the whereabouts of Miss Madeline Tremaine? Madeline Tremaine? Yes. Why, uh, uh... Did you call me, darling? Oh, oh, excuse me. Who is this lady, Mr. Gaylord? Well, who are you? I'm from the police, madam. Police? There's been a murder. Miss Nell Garrett of the Queen's Company was found stabbed in her home last night. Nell Garrett? Yes. Do you know her? Why, of course. This is... I'm fra- afraid, madam, that I shall have to ask you for your name. I'm Madeline Tremaine. Hmm. I'm sorry that you find me in somewhat disarray. I... Miss Tremaine, I'm afraid I shall also have to ask you to account for your whereabouts after you left the theater last night. Very well. Mr. Gaylord can account for my whereabouts. Well, Mr. Gaylord... Why, uh, I, uh... You see, Inspector, it's rather a delicate matter, because since I left the theater last night, I've been here. Is that true, Mr. Gaylord? Uh, yes, uh, quite true, Inspector. <clears throat> I see. Is that satisfactory, Inspector? Yes, yes. Uh, well, I don't think I need trouble you any further, for the moment. Well, I quite understand your position, Inspector. It's a... Terrible, terrible thing. Yes. Well, uh, good day to you. Good day, sir. Oh, Madeline. Oh, yeah. Madeline. You, you, you shouldn't have done it. They'll have the scandal all over every newspaper in the city. Well, a scandal is better than a hanging, isn't it? But there must have been some other way. Now they'll tear you to shreds. They won't have you in anything better than a music hall for the rest of your life. John, there won't be any scandal. If, if what? John... It wasn't just my tiff with Nell Garrett that made me go wandering through the fog last night. I was thinking about something much more serious. What do you mean? I was thinking about what you said. What I had said? John, perhaps I don't really love you yet, but there's no one else. And you're the kindest, finest man I've ever known. Madeline. And now perhaps you saved my life. Oh, Madeline, I... I love you more than anything else in this world, but I wouldn't have you marry me for gratitude. I wouldn't marry any man for gratitude. Madeline, if if I were to tell you that I wasn't here last night either, that I couldn't explain my whereabouts... Oh, I see. Would you still marry me? Yes, John, I will marry you. For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you Angela Lansbury in A Thing of Beauty. Roma Wines' presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Whether you serve wine infrequently or often, enjoy the better taste of Roma Wines. Yes, Roma wines give you more pleasure with every sip, or better, three ways, in fuller bouquet, richer body, and better taste. To bring you better tasting wine, Roma begins with California's choicest grapes, then with ancient skill and wine-making resources unmatched in America, Roma master vintners guide this grape treasure, unhurriedly, to tempting taste perfection. These choice wines are then placed with mellow Roma wines of years before, and from these reserves, the world's greatest reserves of fine wines, Roma later selects for your pleasure. This holiday weekend, enjoy rich Roma California port or tokay, serve after dinner, or in a tall glass with ice and soda as a refreshing warm weather cooler. Served any way, Roma tastes better. 
That's why more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. That's R-O-M-A, Roma, your best buy in good taste. And now Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Miss Angela Lansbury, who as Madeline Tremaine resumes the recital of her brilliant and stormy career. It is a tale told to two clergymen in a darkened room, a tale well calculated to keep them and you in... Suspense! Shall I continue, gentlemen? Oh, yes. Please do, Miss Tremaine. It's most absorbing. Indeed it is. <laughs> really? I hope you don't mind the lights turned off. It's the storm. I suppose I am a sort of an elemental creature, but I always love to sit here and have it dark when it's stormy outside. Not at all. Well, then, our marriage was a very happy one. Perhaps not entirely in the high tradition of grand passion, but a thoroughly comfortable, civilized relationship. Until something happened, which is so often a tragic feature of wedded life between two stage personalities. You see, for the first two seasons, John and I always played together. And then managers began to ask for me alone. What could I do? I was young just reaching the peak of my career. John was past his prime and popularity. And so at last he no longer even tried to have a career but lived along on false hopes and idle dreams and tiresome reminiscences and took up those little hobbies to pass the time away. Even grew a little stout. It was very difficult for both of us. And then for me, came the time and the opportunity that every actress dreams of. Oh, mademoiselle. Hello, Suzette. I've got the most wonderful news. The most wonderful, wonderful news. That's you, Madeline? I'll tell you about it later. Come in, mademoiselle. Yes, John? Come on in here a moment. I want to show you something. Where are you? In here in the den. Oh, good heavens. Now what? <laughs> I thought I'd keep it a secret until I had my first exhibit. I couldn't wait. I've taken up etching. Etching? Yes. Look, here. Well, what's that? You. What? It's only the copper plate, of course. You see, the whole principle of etching... Of Madeline, look out. What's the matter? You almost knocked over that vat of nitric acid. Oh, one drop of that on your beautiful white skin would burn a hole right through you. Well, must you have that sort of thing around, darling? Of course, that's the whole thing. You see, the sketch simply scrapes the wax off the copper plate. Then you drop it in the acid and... Well, that's very interesting, I must say. Yes, well, tell me, what happened in town? Anything? Anything. Everything. Got some plans, eh? Uh, anyone ask for me? Oh, yes, everyone asked for you, John, and I told them you were well. I, I mean, well, I thought there might be a couple of decent plays for a change. I yes, might consider sir. something. If... I know, John. John, how are you on Romeo? Romeo? Yes, John. You see, Maxwell has finally asked me to do a Shakespeare repertory. And high time, by the way, and I'm starting in Romeo and Juliet, and I need... Madeline! Why didn't you tell me, Romeo? We'll be a sensation. Yes. And it's just the thing I need. I know, John. Oh, I can do it all right. Take off a little weight, brush up on the lines. Uh, I've done it yes. before, you know. But, John, oh, I... Oh, Madeline. Oh, you're the dearest wife and the best friend a man ever had. Darling, I... You know, lately I've actually wondered sometimes if you might not think I was... Oh, my darling. Yes, but now, John, don't count too heavily on this. I'm not quite sure yet how things are going to work out. Work out? No. How else can they work out but perfectly? Oh, very well. I'd like to begin reading here at home first thing tomorrow evening. Now shall we take it from Yet I Should Kill Thee with Much Cherishing? Yes. Yet I Should Kill Thee with Much Cherishing. Good night, good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Sleep dwell upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. 
Would I wear sleep and peace so sweet yes, to rest? Yes, yes, darling, but you see on those last, you should already be moving off the stage. You don't want to take too much of them after all. The scene really ends when Juliet leaves the balcony. Well, I know, but you can't just throw them away, Madeline, dear. Those are very famous yes, lines. Yes, I know, darling, but we mustn't think so much in terms of lines as of performance. Pardon, mademoiselle. Yes, Suzette. Monsieur Alexandre Duncan is here. Oh, show him in. Oui, mademoiselle. Alec Duncan, what's that young ham coming around for? Well, John, I've been meaning to tell Hello, you. Hello, Madeline. Hello, Alec. You know my husband. Uh, oh, why, yes, of course. How do you do, Mr. Tremaine? My name is Gaylord. Uh, of course, Mr. Gaylord. Well, I say, aren't I the luckiest fellow in the world? Are you? John. To be playing Romeo opposite Madeline Tremaine. <laughs> Madeline, when I got your cable, I could hardly believe it. I jumped on the boat without even packing a bag. Something wrong? John, I, I have been trying to tell you, but I, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. If I've interrupted him. Uh, no, it's all right, Alec. John, please don't make a scene. I had to have somebody to rehearse with until Alec got here, and I knew you wouldn't be the slightest help to me if you thought... <laughs> oh, John, why must you make an issue of it? I've always known you were a thoughtless, selfish woman, but I never would have believed that you could do anything quite so vile. How dare you speak to me that way? You didn't really think that a man with a 40-inch waistline and a double chin could ever play Romeo, did you? Madeline! I say you... Get out of here. Get out! Get out! Get out! I say, Madeline. Oh, Alec, I'll have to go and apologize. John, I, I want to talk to you. John? Yes, sir. Madeline, be careful of that acid. Acid? Oh, John, I'm terribly sorry for what I said. It was beastly of me. It's I... quite all right, Madeline. Oh, John, I knew you'd see it that way when you came to Because, think... you see, I am going to play Romeo. Oh, John, must we go through it all over again? Madeline, I've forgiven and forgotten a lot of things since we've been married. I've pushed you out in front. I've given you the spotlight. I've, I've watched your regard for me become somewhat less than for your servant, somewhat more than for your dog. John, now look but, here. But this, if only for my self-respect, I will not allow. To dangle before my eyes the thing that I wanted most in all this world, except your beauty that I gave it up for. The thing I've been wanting so much I didn't dare admit it myself. And then to have you snatch it from me. No, Madeline, no, no, no. Waistlines and double chins can be concealed, but a mean spirit never. This one thing you can do for me, and you will. John, really, you're being a fool. You see, I've always known that you married me to save your career and to keep my mouth shut. But there's one thing you haven't known. Where I was the night Nell Garrett was murdered. Where were you? I was at Nell Garrett's home. Well... That explains quite a number of things, doesn't it, John? Madeline, where did you get that gun? I always thought that someday I might need one. Madeline! Don't come near me, John. Very well, John, I warned you. <laughs> you, you monster! You no. beautiful, terrible no. monster! <laughs> As he sank to the floor, he hurled the bowl of acid at my face. It was a frightful thing. Of course, it was self-defense. I was never even brought to trial, particularly when I told it was he who had killed poor Nell Garrett. Oh, but I suffered a complete nervous collapse. And I suppose I've never really recovered. And yet Providence always seems kind enough to leave something to be thankful for, even in the worst of tragedies. Because not a single drop of acid ever touched me. I suppose if it had, I should be horribly disfigured to this day. Well, have I bored you, Mr. Sedley? No. Oh, no, Miss Tremaine. Goodness gracious. Well, Madeline, the storm is almost over. I think we'd best push on. Must you? Well, excuse me for just a moment. Oh, of course, my dear. Oh, my word. The poor woman. Yes. I say, look here. What is it? 
This mirror, it's not a mirror at all. It has a picture pasted in it. The photograph that's in the study. Poor Madeline. Father Benton, Mademoiselle would like to speak with you a moment before you go. Oh, oh, very well. Uh, I'll only be a moment, uh, sadly. This way, Father. Oh, thank you. Oh, Father. Well, Madeline. You may turn the lights on, Suzette, as you go. Oui, Mademoiselle. So that is your young curate, Father Bentham? Uh, yes. Do you like him? He seems like a dear boy. But... but what, Madeline? I'm afraid I can't see him again. Madeline, why? Well, I don't want to hurt his feelings, but it would not be the same. You've been my only true friend in all these years. And when you are gone, I would rather be alone again than... I'm sorry, sir, but Mrs. Stokes is outside. Her little girl is Go dying, away. and when she heard you were here, she... Go away. Madeline. Go away. Uh, come, sir. Go away. Oh. Go. Good Lord. Poor Madeline. Go. It was too much for her. Yes. She killed them both, of course. The woman and her husband. Oh, I... Well, somehow, I, I, I think I always must have known it. All these years, she's lived a lie. Yes, but... That's not the lie that's hurt her. It was the acid. Acid? Didn't you see her face, sir? You forget, my boy, that I am blind. She has no face. Suspense, presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, Roma, America's favorite wines. Before we hear again from Angela Lansbury, star of tonight's suspense play, this is Truman Bradley reminding you that in Roma Wine, you enjoy an important difference, an extra dividend of pleasure in fuller bouquet, richer body, and better taste. Yes, Roma Wines taste better because Roma selects better-tasting wines from the world's greatest wine reserves. Discover for yourself why more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. This weekend, serve Roma California Burgundy or Sauterne with dinner. You'll agree that Roma is a premium wine in everything but price. And now, Angela Lansbury. Hello. I've had many a thrill myself listening to Suspense, and I hope we were able to send a few chills up and down your spines tonight. I'm sure next week's program will, when Roma Wines bring you Hume Cronin in Make Mad the Guilty. It's a real thriller, so don't miss it. Good night. Angela Lansbury appeared through arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of High Barbary, starring Van Johnson and June Allison. Tonight's Suspense play was written by Robert Richards from an original story by Elizabeth Heaston Heisch. Next Thursday, same time... You will hear Mr. Hume Cronin as star of Suspense. Produced and directed by William Spear for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. In the coming weeks, Suspense will present such stars as June Havoc, Vincent Price, Marsha Hunt, and others. Make it a point to listen each Thursday to Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. A famous name presents a great experience in taste luxury. C-R-E-S-T-A. V-L-A-N-C-A. Cresta. Blanca. Cresta Blanca. Yes, for the most discriminating, Cresta Blanca offers two rare California sherries, dry watch and triple cream. Compare Cresta Blanca Dry Watch and Triple Cream with the world's finest cherries, regardless of price. You'll find Cresta Blanca Dry Watch and Triple Cream unequaled in America, unsurpassed anywhere. Shenley's Cresta Blanca Wine Company, Livermore, California. Listen to Suspense next week, same time, same station. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>